Welcome to Gate City Insider. I'm Rosemary Plyben. This month, we are spotlighting an organization committed to taking care of and growing our most important asset, our people. 20 years ago, Action Greensboro was created in part to attract and retain young professionals. Today, that organization continues that work through three targeted programs that we are going to explore today. First, Campus Greensboro. With about 50 thousand college students living in our backyard. Greensboro is training future innovators and our future leaders, talented young men and women that we hope will make their home here after college. Lizzie Tasuda is director of Campus Greensboro. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So what is Campus Greensboro? Yeah, so Campus Greensboro is a program of Action Greensboro, um, which is focused on talent and workforce development in our city. And so Campus Greensboro is the higher education arm of Action Greensboro. Um, So our focus is around the city of Greensboro has seven colleges and universities. We have about 50,000 college students in our area, Um, and Campus Greensboro wants to retain those college students in our city after they graduate. Um, So we were put together uh, in 2016 to really kind of address the issue of where are students going after graduation? How can we connect them to industry prior to them graduating um, so that they can build a base of network here and, and want to stay here in our city? So how do you do that? How do you connect students to those businesses, nonprofits, and events and such? Yeah, so um, we have a variety of different programs and ways that we address this mission, Um, but our flagship program is our Summer Fellows Program, Um, and that's really based on connecting students to paid internships. Uh, We know that if a student um, interns in a city, if they feel like they understand the the industries here and the career opportunities that are here through a paid internship, they're much more likely to stay. Um, And so we focus on how do we get our students here connected to these paid opportunities opportunities um, and how do we incentivize our employers to um, hire interns and, and to especially hire local uh, for their internships. Um, so we know that, you know, in the past, kind of the old school traditional way of thinking about internships can be um, referral and friends and family based, but that doesn't really provide an equitable platform for all students to be able to find opportunity. And so Campus Greensboro acts a, as a one-stop shop. So we are connected to all seven campuses. Um, an employer can come to us and say, hey, I want to hire a summer intern. And um, how do I do that? And we can then post that in turn for that employer um, and then, you know, really promote it out to all seven colleges. We have really strong relationships with each school. We're really lucky to have really great partnerships with them. And they're very invested in the same mission we are. Um, And so we work with career services offices and faculty, uh, deans, um, recruiting events, et cetera, to get those internships out there. Um, And then to help that employer have a full pool of applicants from all of our different universities and colleges. Do you find it's the employers coming to you first or the students or kind of a good mix? It's a good mix. Um, So, you know, I think now internships are kind of the norm now, um, both on the student side and the employer side. So employers are starting to realize how valuable interns are, you know, all the, they bring so much to the team, um, both from different perspectives, but also just um, knowledge. And I think they're starting to realize that. So they're coming to us saying, hey, if I've never had an intern before, how do I start an internship program that's robust and meaningful? And if I have had interns before, how do I find them? And then from the student side, um, they're kind of hearing the same message. They need to have an internship before they graduate if they really want to be competitive when they go into that first job search. Um, And something that I think is even more becoming more prevalent is that it's really in all different industries. I think initially when we think about internships, we really think about business, IT and engineering, which are all of course important fields to have internships in. We promote a lot of internships in those areas, but now internships are in every field. So you mentioned nonprofits earlier. Um, You know, we have nonprofit partners. We work with the arts and music communities and social services, really anything um, in any industry can provide a great internship. And we want all students and all employers to realize that too. Okay. Um, I always say that, so I was an undergrad psychology major, um, never had a paid internship. 
had a lot of unpaid experiences that were uh, great and added to my resume, but definitely I was privileged to be able to take those opportunities. Um, and so I think it's important that regardless of your major and what you're interested in, that you find an opportunity um, for you to get that experiential learning. This past year really threw a wrench into everyone's plans. How did Campus Greensboro adjust and, and continue to adjust to meet students and employers' needs? Yes. Um, so, you know, understandably, internships were one of the first things to go when, when employers were prioritizing their budgets and their time um, when COVID hit. And so we had to do a lot of transitioning ourselves to, to make a robust program. So our fellows program, um, which connects students to internships, but also provides you know, weekly wraparound services through mentorship, professional development, leadership training, and others. We put all of that virtual in 2020. Um, and for 2021, we hope to have a hybrid program where we have some in-person outdoor safe networking um, and some virtual events as well. Thinking about interns, um, we really pivoted our professional development topics for students on how can they successfully have a remote internship. Um, you know, typically internships are not remote or virtual. And so this was a new experience for a lot of students. It was a new experience for us and employers. And so we did a lot of research um, and help students figure out how can they do their best job virtually and still make the connections that they're looking for in their internship, even if they're only through Zoom. Um, and then on the employer side, how do you manage an intern? Um, how do you help, you know, an intern be successful with their time management and their prioritization, um, even if you've never met them? You know, we had some employers and interns who never met in person over the summer, um, which sounds a little crazy, but it overall was very successful. We were really um, impressed with the students' capabilities to adjust. Um, they were really grateful to still have an internship, so they really put a ton of effort into their experience, and I think employers were able to be open-minded to, you know, the traditional workplace might look a little different now. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to see that for 2021 as well. Do you have a success story that you can share about how Campus Greensboro is working? Yeah, so we have a lot of success stories. When I saw this question, I um, had to really think on it. Uh, a lot of our students end up extending their internships with their employers they're working with, or they ha get hired full time by their internship site, which is, of course, what we want to see because we're hoping to retain them here. And we're glad they had such a great experience that they want to stay. Um, you know, thinking about one success story in particular, in 2018, we had a student um, who interned with a, uh, she was a UNCG student. She interned with a big employer here in Greensboro. She was hired full time. She's still there. So she's been there for three years. Um, and she's actually on Synergy Council. So Synergy Young Professionals, which I know we're going to hear about um, later from my colleague, Sarah McGuire at Action Greensboro, um, is kind of a pipeline effort with Campus Greensboro. So we hope that as students, you know, graduate and they, they're from the fellows program, they get plugged into our community in different ways including Synergy, um, then they become leaders in our community through that council. And, and this student in particular did that, a recent grad now, um, did that really flawlessly. Uh, and she's just one of many great stories. Love it. How do students get involved? How do employers get involved? Yes. So applications are open. So if you're a student, you want to get involved right now if you're interested in the summer internship. Um, so you want to go to campusgreensboro.org slash apply. Um, you can apply for the fellows program and our corresponding internships. Um, if you're an employer and you're looking to hire a summer intern, it is not too late. Um, you want to reach out to me. Uh, my name is Lizzie Tasuda, and you can find my email on the website as well. Um, so email me and let me know that you are interested in hiring an intern. There's no cost to participate with Campus Greensboro. Um, so you can hire an intern. We'll help you find that talent, develop that talent, put them through the fellows program experience. And we're just excited that you want to hire students. Love it. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Great to see you. And once again, you can find out more about Campus Greensboro by going to campusgreensboro.org. And when we come back, we're going to learn about Synergy, Action Greensboro's Young Professionals Organization.
Welcome back to Gate City Insider. Action Greensboro is all about connecting people. And now more than ever, we are exploring new ways to connect that support local businesses, our community, and our lives. Synergy is helping to do that for our young professionals living and working here in Greensboro. Sarah McGuire is the Director of Synergy Young Professionals. Welcome. Thank you, Rosemary. What exactly is Synergy? I get asked that question a lot, um, and I have a, a few different answers, a few different ways to describe it, but generally speaking, um, Synergy is a network of young professionals living or working in Greensboro. Um, we are made up of young professional volunteers for the young professional community. Okay, so, so what exactly do you do at Synergy? What do these young sure. professionals do? So um, our purpose is to create a community for young professionals to feel like they can really make a difference in Greensboro, dig their heels in, whether that be personally or professionally um, or through kind of a civic lens. Um, so we provide programming um, and initiatives and projects uh, throughout the year for young professionals to be able to plug into. So um, we kind of think about it in different buckets. So we offer some social networking opportunities we know that if you're uh, a new young professional and you've just moved to Greensboro, uh, maybe you're fresh out of college taking your first job, um, finding your, your group of people, um, your, your friends, is that can be challenging at times. Um, so we like to provide a space for um, young professionals to connect with one another so that they feel like they've got a community outside of their work life. Um, so social networking is definitely something important to us. Um, we also like to focus a lot on professional development. Um, cultivating Greensboro's next generations of uh, generation of leaders is so important. Um, so we offer opportunities throughout the year for um, young professionals to learn about um, tools they can use in the workplace, um, resume building, connecting with people who are working in their industry so they can ask those questions about how do I advance my career? What are my opportunities here in Greensboro? Um, so that's kind of another bucket. And then we also think about leadership. And so leadership can be personally, professionally within the community. However, however, um, young professionals feel like they, they need that leadership cultivation. So um, we partner with organizations like the Guilford Nonprofit Consortium to offer nonprofit board service training. Um, we connect young professionals to volunteer opportunities um, or to other young professional organizations in the area, whatever it is that they feel like they need um, to help boost up their leadership skills. And, and so that's kind of the gamut. And the whole point is that we know that young professionals have a variety of different needs throughout the course of their life as a young professional. The same thing that, you know, a 22 year old needs may not be the same thing that a 35 year old needs. Um, and so we try to offer, um, as much as we can to the community so that, um, everyone feels like they have a place at the table at Synergy. Okay. So tell us about some successes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, successes look a little different um, this year. Uh, as I'm sure you talked to uh, my colleague Lizzie about, she's um, done a great job of, of shifting her, her program virtual. And um, we uh, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, are in the same boat. Um, but traditionally speaking, uh, before COVID, before the pandemic, some successes, um, we have a, a really great annual leadership conference called Lead Your City. It's a day long um, filled of uh, leadership training opportunities to connect. Um, it's a real value add. And I think in our community, um, we know that young professionals um, aren't always at the top of the list in their companies to take those, uh, those cool conference trips and, and go to leadership training. So we try to offer um, a really localized opportunity for young professionals to get out of the office for the day um, and network with each other and learn from some experts in the community. So that's one big win that we have. Um, kind of shifting to uh, COVID era, one, one program that we've uh, kicked off this past year um, that we're hoping to continue this year is called the Synergies Career Seeker Cohort. Um, and we know, unfortunately, that because of the pandemic, um, some of our community has found themselves out of work, furloughed, whatever the case may be. Um, so we had a cohort of eight young professionals who found themselves job searching because of the pandemic. Um, and we met uh, over the course of three months to do some facilitated workshops around um, uh, resume review, uh, virtual interviewing, 
uh, career exploration. And then we also used that group as an opportunity just to hear each other out. Um, connection has been so hard over the past year. And so just finding a group of peers who are experiencing the same thing, um, I think was really valuable. We actually um, ended up having six out of the eight participants find um, local employment by the end of the program. So um, that's one, one big success that we had last year, um, specifically related to the pandemic. And we're, we're hoping to repeat that again this year. Um, but then again, just uh, smaller successes. We found really great engagement this year, um, despite the fact that all of our programming has gone virtual. Um, we found that people are still eager to engage. We found that the, our experts in the community are still eager to connect and, and share, um, share their knowledge. So um, we uh, invite anyone to check out our Facebook. That's You can kind of see our whole year in review on our Facebook because we've had a lot of great sessions and content. Um, and so just the kind of the small successes of keeping people engaged throughout the year and, and moving into 2021. Um, I think that's, that's been a great thing for us. And it sounds like just really being responsive to listening to what your members need and, and, and letting them kind of lead, um, lead, lead, yes. lead the group into directions that you need to go. Yes, absolutely. And um, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to all of the, the young professional volunteers that make Synergy move forward every day. Um, I'm Synergy staff person, but I have the pleasure of working with um, a board of about 30 young professional volunteers who are just truly motivated and special people um, who, who help can Synergy move forward every day. That is amazing. Well, good work. So if people want to get involved, how do, how do young professionals get involved? Yeah. So um, we have a really great website actually designed by uh, a local young professional web designer, Ashley Nassar. Uh, if you're looking for uh, any brand campaign or website development, I highly recommend her. Um, you can go to our website, synergy.org, S-Y-N-E-R-G.org. Um, and we have a lot of information on the website there. You can either choose to join our um, newsletter, um, which gives uh, great information on a weekly basis about what we're up to. Or if you feel like go ahead and, and diving in, um, we have a membership form on our website as well. Um, and our membership is free. Um, we are proud to be a dues-free organization. We invite any um, young professional or anyone who identifies as a young professional um, to, to be a part of our organization. Um, and by being a member, you're simply pledging to um, support, support Synergy, support the young professional community, and really just be a good citizen of Greensboro. And do you need community involvement as well? No, absolutely not. Uh, we love it when people come to the table with connections from other organizations. But one thing that we love is that um, we, we like to be a jumping off point for people who are new to the community. So if you're looking for a way to get involved, please come and join us. Um, we'll, we'll connect you to whatever it is that you're looking for. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you, Rosemary. As she said, you can find out more about Synergy by going online to synergy.org. Org. And when we come back, we're going to find out about boomerangs and how they might be able to shape Greensboro's future. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gate City Insider. You probably played with a boomerang at some point when you were a child, but this type of boomerang is actually a program for grown-ups, specifically ones who grew up in Greensboro and might be thinking about moving back. Cecilia Thompson is Executive Director of Action Greensboro. Welcome. Good to see you. Good to see you virtually. I wish it was in person, but I'm glad we have the technology to do it this way. That's right. We're doing it this way so that we can be together later, right? All right. So let's talk about boomerangs. How did this idea really originate? Well, we're really excited about the new um, Boomerang Greensboro campaign. The idea was really in our heads pre-pandemic. We were thinking about just the number of people that are living here that are community leaders and engaged in the community that are boomerangs. They have uh, deep roots in the community because they either grew up here or maybe they went to college here and they've decided to come back. And so we held a focus group actually um, in March. It was the week before everything shut down um, with about 10 boomerangs to talk about, you know, is this idea worth pursuing, you know, reaching out to prospects and asking them to reconsider um, coming back to Greensboro. So that was the origin of it. And I'll say, 
say throughout the pandemic, I think it's become more and more clear what the advantage of Greensboro is between our quality of life and our green space, which is so um, attractive to people that are living in major metro areas, to the cost of living, you know, the housing stock here, unique neighborhoods um, for a great price um, compared to where a, lo a lot of people are living. And so um, the things that we knew were important to us prior to the pandemic have become really um, evident um, and catching the news really across the country about what mid-sized communities have to offer for people that are seeking um, a better quality of life and sort of changing their perceptions about cities right now. Absolutely. So, so how does it exactly work? I mean, how, how, how do people get involved? How do you reach out to them? How do you kind of start that conversation about coming back? Yeah, so we've already had that conversation with a lot of people and it's going super well. Um, really, essentially, we're developing a list of 100 prospects. And so those can be uh, people that you yourself, Rosemary, you're a boomerang um, that you knew growing up, you would give us their name. Um, you may ask for their permission. Some people haven't. Um, it's kind of been <laughs> funny to see people add their siblings and say, I'm not telling them I'm doing this yet. Um, and we're fine with that as long as the, the person who's provided the name is. And so we're reaching reaching out to those people um, first by snail mail. We're sending them a really beautiful gift in the mail um, with some locally roasted coffees, um, asking them to, or coffee beans, I should say, ask them to wake up to the idea of coming back to Greensboro. And so that package will include brochures and materials, and it'll highlight stories of current boomerangs that are really thriving here in our city. Um, and they'll ask, you know, are you interested? And if you are, then they'll reach out to me and we'll start that conversation of what kinds of questions they have or what they're looking for um, to make the decision. And so we've had that conversation already with several folks and have confirmed some folks that are already coming back to Greensboro. So um, it's a pretty simple, um, it's kind of a sales pitch, yeah. um, but it doesn't feel salesy to us because we really are, you know, believe in the product, which is Greensboro. There'll also be electronic communication. Of course, there'll be an online newsletter. And after sort of what we're calling phase one, we'll launch a second phase, which would be sort of a broader approach to connect with alumni associations of high schools and universities here to use their lists, hopefully to uh, pique people's interest um, that are beyond sort of the, the firsthand contacts. So, so why do you think boomerangs are, can be so important to uh, our local economy, our, our businesses? Why is it so important? Why are these people kind of key to maybe our future here? Sure. Well, I, you know, cities across the country are really thinking about how do we develop talent and recruit talent. And those people can um, go and work for our companies now in terms of the talent that they need to fill uh, positions that are open or potential new jobs that are emerging. We also need people to lean into leadership roles and into the community. And so um, being able to recruit remote workers, that's something that we didn't necessarily have in our plan uh, pre-pandemic, but it is a big part of the plan now. How can we recruit people that want to give back to their community that don't necessarily need to find a job locally, but can contribute to the tax base um, by buying a home and, and spending money here? And so um, there's a number of ways that people can add, um, whether that's their you know flavor of culture or it is um, their talents in terms of workforce or leadership in the community. There's just so many ways that people can contribute um, to the city. And we see boomerangs as a real special uh, piece of that population because there's not a huge learning curve. People understand the value. Um, they understand the importance of this community and the connections that we make with one another. And so those relationships already exist and they can develop and be stronger. Um, and we can capitalize on their intellectual capital and their, um, their expertise, whether that be in leadership roles um, or in our offices and, and businesses. And sometimes having been away, I would think, is an advantage too. Having been away from Greensboro and um, and and learn things in other places that they could maybe bring back to here is, is a big advantage for us as well. Absolutely, they've seen other communities tackle challenges um, and take advantage of opportunities, and so um, we're we're thrilled. And also, I think see some of the things that decisions that cities have made that maybe haven't been fruitful for them. A lot of people are moving back to Greensboro because we're at a point in our trajectory where we're having to make difficult decisions about um, you know, traffic and um, you know, quality of life. And so how can we take those lessons and those experiences from other cities and make sure that we're making the right decisions here in Greensboro? 
So how do we get involved uh, if we know boomerangs or if if maybe someone's watching this who um, could potentially be a boomerang and come back? How does how do how does it how do we move forward with this? Yeah, absolutely. We would love for um, folks to just send me an email or contact us through the website, which is boomeranggso.com. Um, you can put your information in and you can share people's information there. So uh, we'll be sending out um, packages and emails starting in February. And so we're developing that list. Um, it's amazing how many people have just sent me cold emails and said, I'm really excited about this campaign. I want to put my children on the list. Uh, um, yeah. A lot of people want their grandkids back in town. And, and we think that's awesome, you know, for parents to be able to, to chip in and help out with childcare or date night. Um, and so we're selling those moments moments where you can, um, you know, put the kids with your grandparents and go on a great date to the Tanker Center and have dinner and um, maybe walk home. Um, and so those sort of advantage of um, what a night looks like in Greensboro for people um, that have moved closer to their families. So we're seeing um, tons of people um, send us their information. We would love for their physical address and their email address, and we will keep you in the loop um, on the progress that we make. And we may call those people back and say, hey, can you send them a note and say, you know, I heard that you're excited about this, you know, is there something I can connect with you? We're yeah, also developing a list of um, what we're calling Greensboro gurus, which are people that are willing to have conversations with prospects um, and share their experiences. And so it, it's helpful for us to have people, if we're recruiting somebody from Seattle, um, that we can connect them with somebody who relocated from Seattle and answer those questions about, um, you know, what was that transition like for them? So trying to make really personal connections so everybody can be a part of the campaign. Can, can you kind of give us a preview of who are some boomerangs that people might not know are boomerangs here in Greensboro? Oh, that is a good question. Um, well, uh, our, our city manager, uh, David Parrish, is a boomerang. Um, gosh, I have a list of 100 people that, that are boomerangs from uh Clifford Thompson with Thompson Traders um, moved back here from Atlanta and brought his whole family. His sister actually just decided she moved here last May, Alejandra, hey. um, during the pandemic and loved Greensboro so much that she decided to leave her big time job in New York City and come and work for the family business and stay in Greensboro. So they're um, they're house hunting right now. Um, you know, there, the list just goes on and on of the people that you probably know that are boomerangs and most people just haven't thought about that term before. So, um, lots of folks in the city that are boomerangs, including you, Rosemary. That's right. Yes. I love it. I, I like to think of myself as one of the city's biggest cheerleaders. So I love it. Yes. Uh, Cecilia, thanks so much. It's great to see you. And once again, if you know someone who should be a boomerang or you want to connect and perhaps you're watching this and you could be a boomerang, check out boomeranggso.com. And that is our time. Thanks so much for watching Gate City Insider. Until next time, we hope you have a great day.